felt like she stepped up the line one more time, I would break her face. What? I adore you. You're no. born. Listen to me. Stop interrupting me, please, for the love of God. Well, stop speaking for everyone else and speak for Jane. I'm That's trying. what you mean. You're not. You're speaking I'm for not. everyone else. You're What the fuck is she doing? Walked into the pause together. Not in person. Not in person. This is what we're missing. Social situations. Oof. Because I don't like to be in awkward situations, which you willingly do. The difference is, Jade, is when things are too good. No, when when things are comfortable, you self-sabotage, as you always say, and you... My fucking heart feels like it's breaking right now. (laughs) (laughs) My heart feels like it's breaking right now. Wow! These jeans! Walking away with these boot leg jeans. All I see is boot cut jeans. Look at the Hollywood actress. Look at she's posing. This Hollywood actress. This is not a telenovela. I'm trying to say like that. What the hell is going on? I think Barnett is fucking sexy and like hot and like. What the fuck is that? You're insulting me like that. Don't insult me like that. Are you fucking kidding me? The ring on, she shows it off, and then she puts it away. It's just like it's not confusing because she's really into her. You can't really see what's really going on. You know how you tell me this is the best sex of your life? Have you noticed that I don't return the compliment? I don't say it's the best sex of my life, too. She said to the girls it was. So much. Why? Why don't you initiate it? Why don't you seduce me? What? Even though I jump on you every freaking second, why don't you just look at me and. Why is she doing it? Why is she, is she acting? This is not a telenovela. This is not a telenovela. Why don't you move on? I lost my butterflies. <gasps> the butterflies. And I've been trying to get them back. And I would not disrespect you and your family because it is last minute and that's stressful. And right now, I feel like you're jabbing at my family and I don't appreciate that. Jesus Christ. That's what it feels like. Gina, Gina, Gina. She is such a compelling character and I feel like she believes this is some kind of telenovela Hollywood kind of situation and she really wants that kind of role and damn she is definitely playing up to it. Hey guys it's Murad Morali, hope you guys are doing well today. If you haven't already click that button for daily and consistent content. Head over to my Instagram Murad underscore Morali, subscribe to my podcast and let's get into this review. Now I'm catching up guys, I'm back in London now and I'm trying to get into it. I know the Love Island finale, I think aired tonight and everybody was trending number one on Twitter. Everybody's talking about it. I will get into that tomorrow. I'm gonna watch the rest and put it all together so we can wrap this up. But I wanted to get into tonight's episode, well, the last two because we watched it back to back and it was genuinely everything from the couples that we wanted. Now we're gonna get, put Gigi to a, Gigi, you know, Gina to a side for a minute and focus on the Jessica and Mark stuff because it definitely is developing and it is developing fast. Jessica is looking for excuses. She is an absolute mess of an individual and she is looking for excuses, throwing in these curveballs 24 seven. I'm trying to say like that. What the hell is going on? I think Barnett is fucking sexy and like hot and like, what the fuck is that? You're insulting me like that. Don't insult me like that. Are you fucking kidding me? Because she wants the relationship to end. She does not like him at all. She only went with it based off on so quickly falling with Barnett and therefore, you know, she wanted to, to continue that to somehow still maintain communication with Barnett and maintain her relevance in this kind of competition. She is definitely playing a game and unfortunately Mark is not seeing it and it's come to the point where I really don't have any more sympathy for Mark. I find him to be somebody who isn't really seeing his own worth and I just feel like she's shown you so many signs now at this point. What is it going to take? I really don't know. But she, you know, she drank too much wine. She literally said to him that Barnett is more X, Y, Z, more sexy and appealing. So there's so many signs here and he went and slept on the sofa because he couldn't take it like what are you even doing i don't understand you're with somebody who is telling you in an in a intoxicated manner that they find somebody else far more attractive whether they are drunk or not they have said it whether they are drunk or not and he quickly tried to make an excuse because he really wants to make this work but sometimes when you try to make things work so hard you begin to you know cause a lot of just 
haze when it comes for the truth and you can't really see what really is going on because your feelings are so far for developed for you know her and she is playing you so much she's not into you at all with that conversation with Barnet she basically expressed that she's into him more yet again and you can tell that Amber is getting pissed off and I'm expecting a kind of altercation between Jessica and Amber at least. I felt like she's up to the line one more time I would break her face. What? I dare you. I believe that might be happening soon because Amber is seeing all of this. We see them all, you know, going in their family reunions and they're, they're with each other, these kind of cute moments, everything is progressing fast and it definitely is. And you know, I find that to be interesting as well. Kelly and the other guy, I feel like they're just quite boring and they're not really appealing to me, but you know, it is what it is. We also have this, um, Lauren and Cameron. These two, my again, I love Lauren. I feel like she's my favorite character in this whole situation. Just innocent, cute, sweet, fun girl. And you know, her and Cameron are getting on very well together. But it could be seen that Cameron might have issues with Lauren's dad because of interracial related matters and stuff like this. And more so, more so, some people have stern dads as well. And that could be a halt, a hurdle in this situation because so far, so good. So far, they are the strongest couple. So far, nothing is really stopping them. So there could be a family hurdle that could be taking place. Now, Gina. This girl is everything. How could she say to him that, you know, when we were having sex and so forth, you weren't really the best for me and everything, just, just for free. I, I, that really took me out of my body and gave me this out of body kind of experience. You know how you tell me this is the best sex of your life? Have you noticed that I don't return the compliment? I don't say it's the best sex of my life too. I don't understand where that came from. She is giving us that drama. She is giving it to all and I am so here for it because we have so many distinct characters. The casting has been absolutely amazing. We have Amber who is somebody that, you know, has got a hot tongue. She will say what's on her mind and whatever and isn't afraid, very boisterous as an individual. We then have Jessica who is somebody who's very manipulative, very, you know, calculating, has tries to think far ahead in the situation, throw curveballs and has completely messed up the game and liked somebody else. Then we have Gigi, who is somebody who believes that she is in some telenovela and they seem to have issues here. Now, I can I can see where she's coming from. I do feel like the guy that she is with isn't somebody who is clear-cut communicative. I feel like he puts a wall, I don't know what I'm doing here, child, I can be some dancer, da -da, dance what I'm doing here. But like she put, he puts up a wall when it comes to um, emotions and he can't really emotionally connect as much. Therefore, you know, she, it's, she finds it hard to kind of, you know, Really get this kind of passionate feeling from him and again a family situation they had a heated argument in the car where he was like you know don't dis disrespect my family I kind of agree with him to an extent don't disrespect the family but at the same time whether it's your family or not whether it's your best friends or not right is right wrong is wrong you have to call out people if they are wrong regardless of how close they are to you justice prevails over all I've said this so many times on my channel because it definitely does and I feel like the parents should meet her and that didn't take place unfortunately but then of course you know G um, Gina's parents obviously met um, his, the husband to be, but I feel like they're having a lot of you know issues here, and I don't see these two making it far because I feel like he isn't somebody who can communicate as effectively. But at the same time, Gina is a whole mess, but I don't care because I love it. I just love the distinct personalities and characters that we have here because it allows us and it literally pours different interweaving narratives for us to enjoy. Because then we also have Mark, who's somebody who doesn't really see his worth. He's so infused infatuated by Jessica. He doesn't even see how wrong he's going and how crazy this is becoming. We then have the really good positive couple, Lauren and Cameron as well, doing really good. We have Kelly and the other guy and whatever. It's cute, cute stuff. So many different stuff, which is why I feel like this particular episode, this particular season is doing really well. There was a lot of drama in these couple last couple of episodes, a lot of content, we had highs and lows, we had just a great amount of different themes and I just enjoyed it thoroughly and I just feel like this really is giving us what we have missed in this transition time period from other lackluster shows that were expected to give us a lot of stuff but they unfortunately did not. Whereas with this particular show, it's really just replenishing that kind of empty jug within our souls where we know that sounds so sad and dark, but we're not really getting that drama and stuff and it really is kicking off here. I feel like Gina is, and this guy are not going to end well. It's not gonna work out for them. I just don't really see it. I feel like they just, they're, they're clashing way too much and it just isn't going to take place. I'm here for Lauren and Cameron, so we'll see what happens then. You guys have probably watched the finale and are watching this, so I can imagine you guys are probably thinking, Mirage, you don't, you don't even know what's gonna come. That's why, please don't spoil it for me. I have been avoiding it on Twitter somehow and have succeeded. Do not put any spoilers because I love to have 
only genuine reactions. I can't react to something after I found out about it because it becomes too fake and I just hate doing that. So with that being said, this will be my penultimate episode, I believe, and tomorrow is going to be the last one. And I'm gonna cluster the last two episodes together and watch the Love Island finale and hope, love, wow, Love is Blind finale. We've been watching the Love Island finale and that was dead. So the Love is Blind finale will hopefully give me what I need, but I'm just here for this content between Mark and Jessica because Jessica is so manipulative. She is so calculative. It's actually mad. And Gina, she wants that telenovela role and best believe she is going to get it because the way she acts and everything. I just found it interesting how um, G Gina and this particular guy were able to sort out their issues when they were in different rooms because it basically means that this takes them back to the pod, which basically also means, does this experiment really work? Or does it just sell you some form of mirage of what could really be going on? Because it seemed that you guys were getting on well when you're behind closed doors. But when you're together, it could be a different situation because the environmental variables have completely changed. So if you start off with different environmental variables when it comes to a particular experiment, does that mean it's going to be concordant for the entire experiment? Does that mean that it's going to work? Because it probably isn't. If you're starting off with somebody behind the screen, when you're in the rooms together, it's a whole different relationship. So it's really messed up from the start because how could these two solve their issues miraculously when they're in different rooms but when they're together in the same car they're beefing it's, it's very interesting let me know your thoughts on when it comes to this review comment down below and tomorrow night I'll be coming to you my love um, love is blind finale review and we, you know it's just going to be everything let me know what your thoughts are and I'll catch you guys soon for another review